Oh my god. <laughs> so I don't know if y'all have seen the picture, the video, the footage, any of that. Unless you follow me on Instagram, Twitter, or Tumblr, you probably don't know. Um, but I met Patrick outside of a meet and greet after the concert in Dallas on the 15th. It was technically the 16th because it was around midnight. But I am so emotional. <laughs> oh my god, what is wrong with me? I am so emotional over this man. Um, if you haven't watched my video about me talking about my meet and greets from this year when I met him at Boynes of Summer, please watch that. I'm going to put the link in the description. So y'all can check that out, and then y'all can come back to this video, otherwise it won't make any sense. I mean, it will, but it won't, you won't have the same impact. Anyways, um, I am so overwhelmed. I will explain exactly what happened. Me and my two best friends, of course, Allison, my roommate, and Sabrina, who's my, our other best friend, um, we went and saw Fall Boy in Dallas on December 15th. And it was a smaller venue. Uh, the capacity was 3,500 people, which is a small show for Fall Out Boy. It was akin to like a House of Blues type venue, which was probably why it was a lot easier to meet them. The buzzes were extremely accessible. They were right outside on the side. There was a barrier in between that and the parking lot. So it was like, Perfect. And I have waited outside of five Fall Out Boy shows of the eight that I've been through. Uh, five of them I have waited outside hoping that Patrick would come out. Of course I didn't go to the three that I went to the meet and greet. But I went to... Anyway, he's never come out. He's never, ever come out. None of them have come out, but especially not Patrick, you know? And so, I didn't think he would. We went to the, we left, okay, we live in Houston. Me and Allison live in Houston. Sabrina lives in San Antonio. Sabrina drove from San Antonio to Houston the night before. We left at 6 a.m. for Dallas. We got there at about 11 a.m. We waited in line all this, this small venue. We were so excited to see them again because Sabrina goes with us to most of our Fall Out Boy shows because that's our other best friend. And so we just had the best time and we're just, we're like, we're not gonna meet anybody today. You know, it's, there's no meet and greets that we could have bought. Like there's no VIP. It's just like, it's whatever, you know? So we go through the show. First of all, seeing Patrick on stage again after the last time I saw him was in Austin when he and I had that like connection with me talking about wanting to be an actress and filmmaker and all that and him saying of course and if you've watched my previous video you know that that makes me really emotional that my hero believes in me blah 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 so seeing him again on stage was just like oh my god I almost started crying like when they came out and did sugar and so the show was a generic show. It was it was for a radio station, so it wasn't like uh, they didn't play anything that's never been on the radio. It was like the Santa Scene, Uma Thurman, my songs, Centuries, just like things like that, you know. Um, so it wasn't anything different. It's nothing I've never seen before. They did not play the Kids Aren't Alright. They didn't play. Um, anything that's not been on the radio. So generic show, blah, blah, blah. They actually ended really early. <clears throat> they came on at about nine and they were done by about 9.50. So the show was pretty, I wouldn't say rushed, but it was rushed. But it, it was awesome seeing them again, you know? Of course, it's always awesome. This is my favorite band, like the band that's like changed my life, saved my life. Blah, 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 okay. And so um, after after the show, we're like, okay, we're gonna wait. Cause it is a small venue. It's not like it's a huge amphitheater. We have a chance, you know what I'm saying? So, but we didn't think anything was really gonna happen. So we're sitting outside in, in my car, 
because I parked, we got there really early, so I parked right by the buses, like on the other side of the gate. And we're sitting there and there's a bunch of people standing against the uh, fence. And they're all waiting and I'm just sitting in my car right there. It's like I'm waiting outside, but I'm not. I'm warm in my car. And uh, me, Allison, and Sabrina are just sitting there. Allison fell asleep in the back seat. Allison's giving me attitude. She's like, nothing's gonna happen. Nobody's gonna come out. Like, we just need to go home because I need to work a double tomorrow. Because it's gonna take us five hours to get home and it's already like 11 p.m. And so I was just like, I was like, dude, I'm not leaving. I was like, you never know. I was like, I know he's never ever come out at any shows. And I was like, but he might, you know? I'm not risking him not, I'm not risking leaving and then he comes out and I miss it, you know? And so I, I am one of those people that just like clings to something and I don't let it go. And I'm just like, no, I will not leave until all these people are gone <laughs> because that means it's end of, end of hope. When these buses that I know that is one of their buses leaves, then we can go. <laughs> I was like, I'm not leaving. And so we stayed until about 11.45. Crowd dispersed. There was about 100 people waiting. And then it's been so long. It was like 11.45 and there was only about 20 people left like including me, Allison, and Sabrina. And the buses are still there and the security guy comes over and he's like, all I hear, I roll down the window, all I hear is he's gonna come out, he's only going to take two group photos, it's gonna be really quick, and then he's gonna go back. And I'm like, who are they talking about? And they said, we don't know. And so I was like, okay. And so we're sitting in the car just waiting. We see Pete coming. So I guess they were talking about Pete and I was like, oh my gosh. And so <laughs> Pete's Allison's Patrick, her hero, you know? And so Allison's asleep in the back and I jump out of the car with my uh, piece of notebook paper and a Sharpie and all this. And I jump out and uh, Sabrina starts getting out. And Allison starts stirring in the back. She's like, what's going on? And Sabrina's like, it's Pete. And Allison got up so quick. <laughs> it was the funniest thing. And she just like runs out. Pete did not stay very long at all. You know, he just uh, took two, um, two group photos with a whole bunch of people, um, one side of the group and then another side of the group. I'll actually, here's the picture. See, so you didn't really have like personal time. You didn't actually get selfies with him, you know? But like uh, uh, one of my, friends that I got to know in the line, he handed Pete Gray, and Gray, he signed Gray for him, and just like, it was very quick, very rushed. I actually had my piece of paper, and I put it over the fence, and I said, Pete, can you write out the words, you can, just for like, to have in his writing, you know what I'm saying, just to, because those words are special to me, especially because he said those words during Monumentor, like during his little speech. And so I was like, just write it out. And he starts going like this, like basically saying he doesn't have a pen. And I was just like, oh. And so I handed him my Sharpie and then he wrote it out like really quick. And it came out like, like it looks like it says you call <laughs> instead of you can because he was just writing it so quick with nothing behind it. And so, and then he just like ran back to the buses. It was super quick. Security guy is like, Patrick left. Cause everyone's asking about Patrick. He's like, Patrick left. And I was like, oh, dang it. I was like, Patrick left. And so, but we're not giving up hope yet, you know? Cause security guys lie. So we're waiting there. About 10 minutes later, Patrick comes out of the doors towards the buses and he's waving and we're all, my heart stopped. You know what I'm saying? I haven't like, seen him like actually seen him since Austin you know what I'm saying like actually talked to him like actually seen him from even like far away like just not on stage and my heart starts like pounding and like he goes right into the buses and I was like oh my god I was like I want him to come over here like I was on the verge of tears like don't judge me if you've watched the video you understand <laughs> like this guy's like my angel like I wouldn't be here without him without the album Soul Punk, without. Anyways, just watch the video if you haven't. 
because I don't want to sound psychotic. I sound psychotic anyways, but I don't want to sound as psychotic. If you understand my story, then, you know, it doesn't sound as crazy. And so he goes into the buses and we're like waiting there and we're like, oh, I hope he comes back out. And Patrick, he comes out of the buses and he walks around. And I was thinking he was just going to do the same thing as Pete, you know, just come over and just start like taking just a couple group pictures and like we would have to like shout for his attention and like just put stuff over and have it signed. No, it was so it was a fence, but there was a break in the fence. It was like two like tall fences taller than me, like um, not fences. What is it like? the lattice, like, fences, it's like, like a baseball fence, like, you can see through it, it's like a fence, but it's not like a wood, and so, like, there's this two tall ones, and in the middle of those is one that's, like, waist length, waist height, and Patrick went over there, and I'm about 10 feet away from that, because there's so many people standing around, it's only about 20, 25 people, and so, but, like, he comes over there, and he starts talking to people, and I start panicking, and I was like, oh my god, what if they whisk him away before I can talk to him? And I'm just like, I'm starting to like shake. And Patrick's talking to these people, taking his time. Just like really talking to each person. And just like exchanging words and taking pictures and signing things. And I was just like, oh my god. The only time I've ever met that man is in meet and greets. And while I had like a connection with him at meet and greets, those are so insanely rushed. Like you're only in front of them for about 45 seconds. 45 seconds to a minute and that's it tops. You know what I'm saying? And I had always dreamt of this moment meeting him, like actually talking to him. Like, and so I was just like in shock. I was like, oh my God, I can actually like have a conversation, you know? And I was just like so nervous. I was like, I'm gonna say something wrong. But the first and only thing going through my mind was panic and being absolutely terrified that he would not remember me. I was so scared that after the connection that I thought we had in Austin, that he would not remember me and after thinking for so long that I made an impact with him that he would just forget me and I was so terrified I was like having people go in front of me like I knew he could be whisked away at any moment but I was risking letting people go in front of me to talk to him because I was dreading like prolonging as long as I possibly could before I went in front of that man just in case he didn't remember me because my heart would be broken if he did not remember me. And I have this girl who I'd never met in my life standing in front of me, who I didn't exchange phone numbers with, so I need to. If, if you're watching this, please message me and we need to talk because I owe you so much. I would have freaked out if it wasn't for you, a complete stranger. This girl was like, it's okay, calm down. And she was like rubbing my arm and she was like, it's okay, he's right there, he's right there. And just like being so sweet. And I just like rest my head on her shoulder, just shaking, about to start crying. And she was like, do you want me to go first or do you want to go first? And I was like, no, no, you go. And she talked to him and she met him. It was her first time meeting him. She was so excited, she was so sweet. And then it was my turn and Sabrina and Allison are right next to me and they were like, it's okay, it's okay. Just like really like being really supportive and calm while I was freaking out and I might cry. <laughs> Shoot. So I walked up to Patrick and I stand there for a second and he looks up at me and I could see a recognition. He, his eyebrows raised and his eyes got bigger. And he goes, oh, hey. And he pulls, he initiates this hug. He opens his arms and pulls me into a huge hug. And it's just like squeezing me. And I was just like, 
Oh my God. I can't believe she actually remembered me. Like, it's been almost like four and a half months and like I couldn't, I couldn't believe that she remembered me. And like, I pulled back and I was like, I was like, I can't believe you remember me in the hug. And he was like rubbing my back and, and after I pulled back, he said, of course. He said, I remember you said you wanted to be an actress. And, like not only did he remember my face, but he remembered that fact about me. So that was the perfect time for my card to fill up. Anyway. <laughs> It gave me time to dry my tears, <laughs> so anyway, I could not believe that he remembered me. Like, I'd heard from people that he remembers, I've heard from people that he recognizes people, and yeah, like, I was, I was super surprised that he remembered my face. But not only that, he remembered that I wanted to be an actress. And he remembered, like, the holding his hands in Austin. God, why am I crying? <laughs> like, <laughs> I, I can't fathom it. I can't believe that I'm so blessed, you know, to be able to meet my hero like this. And, yeah. <laughs> so, he said, yeah, I remember you wanted to be an actress, and he, he remembered. I'm sorry, I'm stuck on a one-track thought right now. <laughs> I've tried not to think about it the last couple days because I'll just start crying. And, so anyway, <laughs> We're talking, and Allison comes up and said, hey, I'm with her, and he goes, of course, like he remembered us together as a unit, because remember he read my note, he knows our story, I'm pretty sure they played the kids aren't all right because of us in Austin. Not just because of us, of course, but, like, he remembered. And Allison talked to him and got him to say hi to her sister on the camera. And I got my selfie with Patrick. I've always wanted a selfie with Patrick. Like, I've had my meet and greet pictures, but I finally have my selfie. And so here that is. <laughs> and then I have a picture of me hugging him. And like oh my god I know you've probably heard it before but Patrick Stump gives the best hugs in the world he really does he squeezes you <laughs> and it, oh my gosh he was so sweet out there just taking his time and talking to everybody and there was this girl who was cold and he took off his leather jacket and gave it to this girl. I mean, I don't know if it was leather, like real leather, but he gave it to her to keep warm while he was out there talking to us for like 30 minutes. That man's an angel. <laughs> he really is. And so I, I said, I also said to Patrick, I said, after I said, I can't believe you remember me, I said, in Austin, uh, I held your hands and I told you that I was going to make it one day and he goes, uh-huh. And I said, and you said, of course. And so I got the words, of course, tattooed as motivation and I showed him my tattoo and he goes, that's awesome. <laughs> he was so sweet. And so I had him write out some lyrics for me so that I can get them tattooed. 
I had my phone and then I had the paper on top of the phone. Oh, excuse me. And I gave him the Sharpie and I said, at the top, can you write coast? And then at the bottom, can you write be your own spotlight? Because those are two uh, of the songs that really helped me through the things that I've been through from his solo work. And he was like, of course. And so I put it down and he was, he wrote out coast and then he started writing be your and then he couldn't see because I, well, I said, please write it nice because I'm going to get it tattooed. And so he wrote so slow and made sure to make it look pretty, you know, like as pretty as he could get it, you know? And so he couldn't see. So I had some, uh, he goes, I can't see. He goes, there's no light. And so someone holds up a light so that he can see and he marks out the be your that he wrote because apparently he didn't think it was good enough. And so, and then he started Be Your Own Spotlight, and so I have that here. And I'm gonna get Be Your Own Spotlight tattooed. And I'm just like, I finally have lyrics that I can get tattooed. Because they don't let you write in meet and greets. And I finally have that. And when I meet him again in March, I'm going to show him my tattoo of his lyrics. <laughs> because I have a meet and greet in San Antonio. And so, just like talking to him and everything. And Sabrina went up to him and talked to him. And Sabrina was just saying hi and got a picture with him. And she was like, and this is Jordan. She's awesome. Like, he knows. Like, my name and everything. And... She goes, this is Jordan, my best friend, she's awesome. And he goes, yeah, I'm aware. And I was just like, eh. And so I, we left for a while and then we came back because we realized he wasn't leaving. I, uh, I put my hand out to say bye the first time. I put my hand out and to say thank you, to like hold his hand and say thank you. I put my hand out and he grabbed my hand and he squeezed it. And I said, thank you. And he, he goes, thank you again. And he was just, oh my gosh, it was so sweet. And I like, I'll be like, I can see him in my face, in my head, just like saying all this and dang it. I wish I had filmed all that, you know, like him recognizing me and stuff, but I'd probably like lose my mind crying every single day if I had that on camera. So yeah. And <laughs> so we, we went back to my car, which was like 10 feet away from where he was talking to everybody. So we sat in my car for a while and I recorded myself talking about what had just happened so that I could process it. And I was like really loud and like excited and stressed out and freaked out. And I recorded this like really hasty video that I was originally going to upload to YouTube as my video like this, but I was like, no, no, no. I was like, I need time to make this video right. And so we're sitting in the car, all this, and Patrick, he, he's talking to the people and then he'll start walking away towards the buses and then he realizes that someone else, someone didn't get a picture, someone didn't get a hug, so he'll come back and then he'll leave and then he'll come back and then he'll leave and then he'll be like, oh, and then he'll come back and he is the, he, there is no celebrity in the world who cares more about his fans than that man does. That man is a literal angel. And he came back for everybody, made sure every single person got a picture, made sure everyone was happy, you know? And he, then he, after everyone had gotten a picture, every, he just stayed out there talking to people. And so I was like, okay, I was, I was debating whether or not to go back. Cause I was like, I don't want to bother him. I was like, I don't want to take time away from people who had never met him before, you know? And I just, I didn't want to say something stupid. I didn't want to risk going back and making a fool out of myself. So, but I was like, all right, let's go back. And so we get out of the car and we start walking back up to Patrick. And Patrick looks at us and he looks at me and he goes, yeah, I saw y'all coming back. <laughs> and I was just like, oh, he was so sweet. And like, 
Yeah, and so I had my phone out and um, I took a video of all of this next part. I said, is there any way that you can say an inspirational message in here? And I have the link for that inspirational message that he gave is right down below. It's also on my channel. So y'all can watch that, like me talking to him and him. He said something in there that completely changed the way I look at things. And because I'm on this journey right now with weight loss and I've given up so many times. He didn't talk about weight loss. He talked about how people are scared of success and how people are pessimistic and they're expecting something bad to happen once things get good people expect something bad to happen and people are just so pessimistic and that's the way I am. I'm so scared to get to my goal weight. I'm so scared to succeed because I'm going to be like lost. I'm going to be like what's next and I'm going to expect something bad to happen. And Patrick, what he said in that video just completely changed the way I think about things and I'm so glad that I asked him to say that or I didn't, I asked him to say something inspirational and he said exactly what I needed to hear. Proving once again how much of a hero of mine that man is. This man's incredible. I just can't even fathom everything that happened and I'm just so happy and so blessed and getting to talk to my hero multiple times and him remembering me and just like knowing that Patrick knows me, knows my story, knows where I want to go. He's written out lyrics for me. He, he knows me. I mean, he doesn't know me, but you know, he means a lot, you know? And I get to meet him again in March. I don't know what I'm going to say to him there. I feel like it's going to be the last time I ever meet him in March. Not ever, but for a really, really long time. And so I need to say something significant. And by the time I meet him again in March, I'm going to be at my goal weight. And I'm going to have succeeded. And I'm not going to be scared about succeeding anymore. And a big part of it is because of what he said. And I'm going to look completely different in March, so let's hope he doesn't not recognize me. <laughs> but yeah. And I hope and I pray that you get to meet your hero like I've met mine. Because everybody deserves to feel this way. Everyone deserves to meet the person that helped them through things, that make them smile, that the person that changed their life, everyone deserves to meet that person. And if you're scared that you'll never meet that person, you will. I never thought I would meet Patrick, ever. And look what happened. Never say never. Don't be pessimistic. Watch the video that Patrick is talking in. Never say never. Never doubt that something's going to happen. Always keep hope. It'll happen, I promise. You deserve to feel this way. I'm elated. I'm so happy and I know that my future is so bright and I know that I have a long journey to get to where I want to be, but I am not going to go down without a fight. Sugar, we're going down swinging, you know, like it's going to happen. And Patrick is a huge part of that. Like I told Patrick in Austin, I said, I'm going to make it one day. And I said, and I want you to know that it's because of you all. And he said, no. It's going to be because of you too. And he pulled me into a hug. And that changed me. Like, yes, I owe a lot of my success and or future success 
to them for putting me in the right state of mind. But really, they were a crutch and they helped me realize my own potential. I did this, nobody else, you know? And I love these men, I adore them, Patrick in particular. They helped me. They helped me save my own life. Nobody did it for me. I can think of their music as the thing that inspired me to want to live, to want to keep pushing. But in the end, it was me. And just meeting the person whose voice I ran my first mile to, never thinking that I would be able to. Meeting the person that wrote the music that saved me for myself. The song Coast from Soul Punk saved me. It helped me save myself. Just meeting that person and him believing in me and him remembering me and me being ingrained in his mind. It, God, it feels amazing. And you're gonna feel this way. If you ever think that hope is lost within yourself, please message me because I don't want anything to happen. Keep smiling, keep being positive, and things get better. I promise. Four years ago, I was a wreck. Now I'm 24 in my own apartment, living my dream. So I love you. Patrick Stump sure as hell loves you. Just keep on keeping on. It gets better, I promise. I'm so blessed. And you are. And me too.